Hello. My name is Adi Somek, and I am a professional balloon twister. I am 45 years old, and I inflated my first balloon when I was 19. So for the last 26 years, my job has been to create as much joy for as many people as possible, and I've done this in over 40 countries. And I specialize in improvising balloon crowns that try to capture people's personalities and auras. And I uh, work primarily with adults. I lost the intestinal fortitude for kids' parties many years ago. <laughs> but I try to make adults feel like kids. And I also try to make things that are beautiful, but I can make the most beautiful thing I've ever made in my life. And if the person is not feeling joy, I really haven't done my job. And this thing that we call joy, it's very mysterious. It is primal and meaningful, and at the same time, ephemeral, elusive, and at times, seemingly unattainable. The one thing I am very confident about is the most joy you can feel is when you give joy to somebody else. But before we get into the whole thing, let me give you a little demo. I have this balloon here. You see, I inflate it all the way, and I let the air out, and you see, it's gonna be much longer, it's stretched out. So what that allows me to do is wrap it around two fingers like this. Okay. And I'm gonna put this here for a moment. We'll come back to that. Then I get these two balloons. This is coral and wild berry. And I'm going to tie these together. And these balloons are made from they're, they're made from the rubber tree, so they're actually organic material, and they are 100 percent biodegradable. So I'm going to twist this together like that. And now I'm going to pop it, but it's a very professional pop, OK? When I was in my 20s, I was living in New York, and I met a photographer named Charlie Eckert. And we decided to do a project where we'd go around the world and make balloon hats for people and take photos of them. And we went to <laughs> 35 countries. And basically, we would just show up and improvise and document people's reactions. And the balloons were really like a social lubricant. Everywhere we went, we'd meet people and become like instantly friends. And if you take your favorite comedian and drop them in this small village in China, the chances are high that nobody would be laughing because they wouldn't understand the jokes. But balloons, like ice cream and James Brown, transcend the language barrier. <laughs> so everywhere we went, we were able to really create joy for people. And balloon hats do not know, know uh, age restrictions. And the balloons didn't have any, uh, they transcended tribal affiliation. <laughs> Often the balloons can transcend politics. And we even met uh, a camel who loves balloons. And here is a whole family in Mongolia. <laughs> Thank you. So let me take a step back and explain how I got into this whole balloon thing. When I was a kid, I had little to no artistic ability. And it wasn't that I didn't try. I tried guitar and photography and ceramics. And I really just wasn't very good at anything, and I knew it. And I went to UC Santa Cruz. After my freshman year in college, I needed a job. And because I was so lazy, I waited too late to get a real job. So the only job I could find was twisting balloons at restaurants on tips four tips. And when I did that, I, for the first time in my life, I felt, oh, this is what it's like to be good at something. I'd never <laughs> felt that before. <laughs> it was literally like I was a balloon guy in a previous life. I just kind of knew what was happening. 
And the problem was I was very humiliated by this because if I could have picked my top five talents that I wish I had, <laughs> Balloon Twister would not be in the top 500. <laughs> and my friends made fun of me, my parents were concerned, and I was basically a self-hating balloon guy. <laughs> and fortunately, I had this kind of old school work ethic where I figured if I'm gonna be good at something, I might as well just practice. So I would volunteer at nursing homes, and that's an amazing place to practice because one, nobody's in any hurry. <laughs> and two, everyone's really grateful. So it's basically the opposite of regular life. And <laughs> so I would go from room to room and I'd make a flower and a hat. And as I was leaving this one day, uh, one of the nurses said to me, you know, for a lot of these people, you just gave them surprise and delight for the last time in their life. And those were the words she used, surprise and delight. And when she said that, it, I all of a sudden realized, oh, this isn't something to be ashamed about. This is actually emotional dynamite. To meet someone who's late in the fourth quarter of their life, past the two minute warning, and they have maybe emotional despair or chronic pain, and to give them a little dose of youthful enthusiasm was really meaningful. And I decided at that point that I really wanted to investigate this thing called joy and try to generate as much of it as possible using balloons. So I'd like to share with you now some of the things I've learned about joy through balloons and also as just a regular participant observer of life in general. The first thing is that joy is instinctive. When you look around to see where we see joy most, it's always with children. You do not need to teach a toddler how to experience joy. You couldn't even if you wanted to. So the analogy is like if you buy a brand new computer, you take it out of the box, it's got an operating system built into the computer already. And joy is a feature in our operating system right out of the box. And that instinct in children becomes a universal expression in adults in laughter. So if you see a group of people and they're speaking a language and you don't know what language it is and you don't know what they're saying and they start laughing, you instantly know what's happening because laughter sounds the same in every language. The second thing is that joy and happiness are different. And they're similar and they're related, so we often use the words interchangeably, but really they're two distinctly different experiences. Happiness is more of a long-term contentedness. It's a quieter experience. Joy is totally absorbing and just is an explosive energy. So I could say, I'm happy living in Palo Alto, but I wouldn't say I'm joyful living in Palo Alto <laughs> because joy, like a belly laugh or an orgasm, is not something you can sustain very long. <laughs> and I just a few days ago came back from Greece where I was volunteering at a school for all the refugee families who were stuck in the island of Lesbos. And this is maybe the most unhappy scenario any, anyone could imagine going on in the world right now. Having to flee war, losing your home, everything you own, and everyone is traumatized and surrounded by instability. But when these kids learned how to make a balloon flower in this class, they were all able to experience joy just like any other child. And joy is therapeutic. And what I mean by that is we all experience joy, but how we experience it is different from person to person. For instance, this person, it might be snowboarding an impossible mountain, and for this person, it's a bubble bath and a good book. But when we experience joy, it, it connects us to what's important to us, our core values, and recharges our batteries. And the other thing is that, well, here's a story. When Charlie and I did our balloon hat travels around the world, we were in Vietnam, and we were walking around, and we saw this group of kids, and there was about maybe eight or nine kids, and I made them all hats. And the whole time, I kind of saw in the corner of my eye an old man squatting, smoking cigarettes. And after I made the kids the hats, they all pointed at the old man and said, make grandpa a hat, make grandpa a hat. So I walked over, and I asked grandpa if he wanted a hat, and he just kind of nodded and kept smoking, and so I made him, <laughs> I improvised this crown for him. 
And his son walked up to me and said that his father was a general in the North Vietnamese Army and spent many years fighting against the Americans and would like to invite us into his home. And of course, Charlie and I never said no to any invitation like that. So we're in his living room and we're sipping homemade Vietnamese rice wine. And all of a sudden, the general and his wife started singing to us a cappella folk songs from their childhood as a way to thank us for the joy that we brought his family. So it was a very rare and beautiful and slightly surreal experience. One I'm sure the general couldn't have imagined 25 years earlier in the middle of the war. Later that night, Charlie and I were at a restaurant eating and all of a sudden, a bearded guy in his 50s, a British dude, sticks his head in the restaurant, looks around, sees our table and makes a beeline right to our table and he said, I'm an anthropologist and I've been here for the last half a year studying these people and their ways and I want you to know you got more in this culture in one afternoon than I have in six months just because you had these balloons. So what the anthropologist was amazed by was that something as simple as inflatable latex done with the proper spirit of intent could create genuine joy which then would lead to trust and communication. So that's a quick cursory glance of just some of the things I experienced about joy from 26 years of balloon twisting. And, and that's just scratching the surface because joy remains a mystery to me. And it's the nature of mystery that we cannot define it, let alone control it. All we can do is really feel it and contemplate it and appreciate it. The one thing I am certain about is that the most joy you can feel is when you give joy to somebody else because then it bounces off of them back to you and creates this positive loop of positive energy. And the beauty of it is that you don't have to be an artist and you don't have to get a master's degree in balloon twisting. The trick is to find your own contribution, what you really love, what's easy for you, what you like to do, what you love so much. Because when you actually give it away, that's when you receive joy. And when you give it away, you wind up being rewarded by feeling literally lighter, healthier, and more grateful. Thank you. <laughs>